Hi, Year 5. Uh, we're on to the build-up part now of our story when we're uh, recreating the tear thief. So I've got three things with me now. Bear with me when I'm doing this because I can't type and do the zoomy things like Miss, uh, Mrs Khan. So I've got the original story of the tear thief. Then I've written my own version, which I've called the giggle grabber. And I've got my trusty felt, uh, trusty felt pens. So I'm going to take, it th uh, take you through step by step what I did to create my next step, the build-up of the story. Okay, so I thought we'd start by just looking back at the original story, The Tear Thief. So I'll read it through to you, um, just as a reminder. The Tear Thief came to a quiet road with a neat row of houses and flew into a tall tree for a good look and a listen. All the curtained windows were flushed with light and enticing smells of soup and stew and pasta and onions, the Tear Thief's favourite, and rhubarb crumble were drifting up and away in, into the deepening dusk. The Tear Thief listened hard with sharp ears. A child was crying. The tear thief jumped lightly from the top of the tree onto the roof of the first house. She crept along the rooftops, silent as smoke, listening, listening, until she heard the crying again. Boo hoo hoo! Okay, so that's the that was the professional one. Let's have a look at what I did. So let's get back down to here we go. Oh, I've got that in short. Yes, I have. Right, so this was my version of it. The giggle, the giggle grabber. The giggle grabber scooted over the brow of a steep hill and gazed greedily at the scene beneath him. A cornucopia of smiles and laughter fed his greedy senses. Below his eager gaze was a theme park, a veritable thie a feast. His pointed elf-like ears caught the squeals, giggles, guffaws, tittles, chuckles and belly laughs, causing them to tingle in anticipation. Tucking his flame hair tightly into his floppy purple sun hat in order to hear even the tiniest squeak of pleasure. He mounted his trusty steed, not a gleaming stallion as you may have thought, seeing as he was a magical creature, but rather a nice scooter he had borrowed. Naughty boy. His velvet jacket flowed behind him, a rippling stream of purple billowing in his wake. Closer and closer he rode, the theme park beckoning him with open arms. His efforts were rewarded. Tee -hee! A child was giggling. The giggle grabber swiftly dismounted, a wisp of smoke alert and ready. Tee -hee! Right, so, as you can see with the original, what I did, can you see with the O here, I looked through the story and I decided to try and section it up myself into obda, opening, build up, dilemma, uh, events and resolution, like we do in class. Okay, so then what I needed to do was to choose what the build up part of the tear thief must have been. So I'm going to read now the part from the tear thief, which is the build up section that what what I call the build up section in the story. Ha, huh, the crying was coming from number 17. Quick as a blink, the tear thief slid down the chimney into the attic and pressed her ear to a floorboard. Boo hoo hoo! Down the stairs, sly as steam, sneaked the tear thief onto the landing and into the bathroom. A boy was sitting in the bath, crying his eyes out. His mother was kneeling by the side of the bathtub, holding a pink bottle of strawberry shampoo. The tear thief sat, perched on the edge of the bath, watching excitedly and loosening the top of her sack. I don't want to be shampooed, wailed the boy in the bubbles. Stop this silly crying, said the boy's mother, or the tear thief will hear you. The boy stopped crying and stared at his mother. A single plump tear dangled from the end of his nose like a pearl. The tear thief pounced. In one quick movement, she snatched the gleaming tear from the boy's nose and popped it into her sack. <gasps> Grasped the boy as the last tear seemed to disappear into the air. I told you, said the boy's mother, that was probably the tear thief. The boy and his mother started to laugh, but by now the tear thief had flown across the hall, out through the front door and had shimmied halfway up a lamppost. She sat on the top, swinging her legs and listening. Through the upstairs window at number 25 came the sound of a bad tempered screaming and sobbing. The tear thief slipped down the lamp post, slithered up a drain pipe to get to the window. Her wide grey eyes stared at the, in at the child's bedroom. 
a red-faced girl in a, in a nightdress, was jumping up and down, having a terrible tantrum and scattering tears all over the room like fistfuls of gravel. I want chocolate, bawled the girl. The tear thief hopped into the room and began to steal the tears. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, into the silvery sack they went. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. The more tears the thief, tear thief collected, the more tired the girl became, until eventually she sat down on the floor with her, with her back against the wall and fell fast asleep. The tear thief slipped out through the window. A light rain began to fall orange under the street lights. The tear thief worked hard. She stole the oddly long tears of a boy who had trapped his finger in a flute. She stole the tiny tears of a baby having her nappy changed into the sack. The tears shed by a pair of twins fighting over an orange teddy bear. Into the sack, two pear-shaped tears from the sly cheeks of a boy who had been caught telling a lie about a big hole in his trousers. The tears were jewels inside the darkness of the sack, clinking and clinking and winking. Tears of rage were red and glowed like rubies. Tears of envy were as green as emeralds. Tears of self-pity were turquoise. Scared tears were white like moonstones. And guilty tears were amber. Okay. Just as we do in class, I'm going to create myself a bit of a checklist now. I'd already sectioned up the original story into the obda, and now I'm going to create a checklist of the things I want to make sure I've got in the story okay now one thing that I really enjoyed in the story was all of the mapos do you remember we talk about mapos the fig figurative language so what different types of mapos could we use well I noticed alliteration what else did I see there was lots of personification There was, what else do we have? We had, I'm going to just drop down a bit just so that I've got other things. Speech. Why were we using speech? Why does the author use speech? Do you remember? It's to move the story on. We want to get the story moving on. It's the action. So speech to move story on. And it characterises the different people in the story. So you get a feeling of what the children are like, you know, with the girls whinging and crying because she wanted chocolate. Didn't come across as a very nice little girl, did she? Or then you had the baby crying and all those other ones, OK? So we had, oh, here, power of five. I seem to remember that, all three. So put power of three. I'm doing this absolutely one by one. So we've got Mapos and all the figurative language. I'm sure you can think of the others. So we do remember M. Metaphors, A, alliteration, P, personification, O, onomatopoeia. Oh, definitely got that, haven't we? Although you know me, I'm never going to remember how to spell it. And S for simile, all right? So try and see if we can find the different forms of mapos or create the different forms of mapos. We've got speech. Now we've got varied sentence structure. Now, that sounds complicated, but it isn't, is it? Varied sentence structure. What do I mean by that? I want you to have long sentences with a complex uh, setup. So you've got the brackets, we've got the um, short sentences for effect, the one word ones or the two word ones, which really stop and make the reader listen. Remember, this is a story to be read to somebody. OK, so it's all about how the person reading the story can show the emotions and show the movement within the story. OK, so we're going to do that. And ah, now we are always aiming to try and level ourselves up, guys. OK, so if you're going to if you're especially if you're in my group back at school, we're going to be looking for showing shifts in formality and changes in tone. I had a real go at that and I'm going to just challenge you now when you see my actual story to see if you can identify where I tried my best to do the changes in tone. All right. Now, what else have we got to get in there? Now, obviously, we've got the punctuation. I want that higher order punctuation, please. You know how to do it. So absolutely no mistakes, please, with the capital letters and full stops. Then I would like, love to see some semicolons. Can we chuck some colons in there? Speech marks. We can have ellipsis. What else could we put in there? Think about the other, we could put brackets in. What do we use those for? Parenthesis, okay? Let's try and add and up-level our writing when we're doing it. 
Uh, anything else that I'm going to try and fit in there? What else could we get in there? Um, hmm. Well, I'm going to leave it at that for now. And let's have a look and see whether I can find any of those things within the story that I wrote. So I'll show you what I did. Here's mine. The giggle grabber. The further for the build up. Right, I'll read it to you first and then I'll go back to having a look and seeing if I can identify any of those things. So, yes, there was giggling coming from a toddler's pushchair. Faster than a year five child running towards the canteen at break time, the giggle grabber scooted forwards. <laughs> Giggled the red-faced toddler, squirming in delight whilst his big brother tickled his tummy to keep him happy in the long queue for the merry-go-round. Thank you, Sid sighed their mother, who was obviously beginning to regret joining the snaking queue. If you're lucky, the giggle grabber may have heard. He would be so pleased with you. Oh, yes, I am, thought the giggle grabber as he wafted that giggle into his azure sack. Off he scooted, ears pricked and tingling, high above him at the very top of the big wheel, squeals of nervous laughter, like piglets in a sty, emanated from a swinging carriage. Oh, stop that! squealed a pink-cheeked teenager with obvious delight. The giggle grabber held his flowing cloak like a bat like bat wings and soared effortlessly upwards, chasing the squeal, a giggle hawk focus, hawk focused on his prey. Into the sack went the cruel laugh of a girl watching someone's ice cream fall from their hands, an embarrassed chortle of a dad who'd hit his crazy golf ball onto the next hole where another family were playing, and a whole class full of belly laughter coming from a class of school children whose teacher had told them an extraordinarily funny joke. Teachers are well known to be amazing comedians. The giggles were like balloons bouncing about in the sack, bulging and bouncing and squeaking. Giggles from tickles were bouncy orange bubbles. Embarrassed chortles were pearly pink clouds. Cruel laughter was black as the night sky. And belly laughter were balloons... Uh, Belly laughter balloons were huge, wobbly jellies, wibbling and wobbling precariously. All right. OK, so we're going to start off. Let's start off by just looking for the basics. So the maples, OK? Now, I'm going to get a different colour pen because I'm a bit like that. So let's find... Oh, I've got a pink highlighter. So maples. Can I discover... Have I used it? Let's check my work. Let's see. Fast... Blah, 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 blah. Faster than a child, so on this one here, what is this? Faster than a year five child running to the canteen at break time. What is that? Can anybody guess? Can anybody guess? Faster than a year five child running to the canteen at break, to at break time. That is going to be simile. Okay, let's move on. Tee -hee -hee, giggled the red faced toddler, squirming in delight whilst his big brother tickled his tummy to keep him happy in the long queue. Mm, not there. Right, let's move. Oh, hold on a minute. Yes, what am I talking about? Tee hee hee. What would that be? Onomatopoeia. Okay, what are we going to do here? Let's move on through. I'm going to say. Nervous laughter, like piglets. Oh, like piglets in a sty. Another simile. What, like, like bat wings? Yep. Ah, what do we call it? A giggle hawk. We made that up. Maybe we could call that a metaphor, couldn't we? Into the sack went the cruel laugh. <laughs> The giggles were balloons. Oh, no, like balloons. Oh, you see, I should have got rid of the like, but otherwise it made it into a metaphor so we could change it up a bit. So the giggles were like balloons. We'll leave that there. What else have we got? Cruel laughter was black as the night sky. Oh, gosh, I've really hit the old simile hard. And, ah, oh, right, were. So those, that would be uh, a metaphor for you, wouldn't it? Okay. Right, okay, fine. So we've done that. We've looked at those ones. So let's have a look for what else I needed to include in this. So if we're going to have a look at the varied sentence structure, because that always really helps, doesn't it? But a varied sentence structure. So here we go. A one word sentence. Good. 
all right and we might as well therefore look at the speech to move things on so there we got you get the idea of here the story moves on we get to find out what's going on with each of these characters we also get to know a little bit about the characters in the story with a thank you Sid and sighed their mother so don't sighed better than said yes okay and um, what else can we have here so ah I know what I'm going to put in This is a seriously long sentence here, so okay? this one here. The idea being we're talking about more and more and more of all of the different things that were going into the sack. And here is some parentheses. I must admit, I did indulge myself a bit there, but you know, I always like to do that. So teachers being amazing comedians, we all know it's true. And what else? Okay. I think this is, and so you can see also here, this is exactly the same, well, it's same in ideas as this here. This bit here in the original story, okay, from the Tirthi. So I really did magpie like mad and just put my own ideas and my own thoughts into it. Now, this week, don't panic, don't get stressed by it, you have done it before. This week you've been creating your own mind maps and all the rest of it, it's all there ready for you to move on. Just remember, creating yourself a checklist like this, you can add to it, there's loads of things I could have added to this, aren't there? But when you've added that checklist, it really helps then for you to go back and up-level your work. Good luck everybody, can't wait to see them.